Today is Friday, February 26, 2021. Welcome to the Osprey at the Lake of St. Mary's. Here we go. For those of you watching on YouTube, you don't get a special intro for this video. I didn't really have anything real special for my intro because I used up all my free uh, my free clips that I have. I'm only allowed up to 20 clips per month. And these are all clips that I use in my intro for my videos. So hopefully you enjoyed that intro. So there is the female osprey in the nest. I know it's the female because the female is always the one that stays in the nest. Like she's always ready. And she's the bulkier one, and she's the one that has the brownish necklace. Even though they both have some brown on them. How about I try to get closer to these osprey, huh? Alright, so the osprey's quiet. She's not doing anything. So that's how far I am from the nest. I'm going to see if I can get closer, okay? So I'm just going to walk regularly and just kind of walk. One thing's for sure, I do need bug spray. Okay, bug spray is in here. I need to just put a little bit of, dab a little bit of this on my legs. And then we're going to get going. Yep, and put a little bit on my arms too. Mm. Crap. Start running out of bug spray in a minute. Oh. Okay, so, so far so good. Everything's good with the Osprey. Hi Osprey, hello there. Uh, how are you doing? How was migration? Did you have fun while you were migrating? What did you see? What did you do? Were you over in South America? Yeah, I think that's where they were. I think they were in South America. Central or South America. One of the two. Yeah, so right now only the female is in the nest. Because that's the one that always stays the closest to the nest. Now she's not quite in the nest, but she's on the she's standing on the outside of the nest. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go. I'm not gonna go this that way. Because you can't really see anything really. So I'm gonna go like maybe towards the center of the nest. So like I said, I'm just walking this way. I'm not looking at the osprey at all. Okay. Maybe I should look at the osprey. Okay. Yeah, so I'm keeping this on record because I always like to try to record me even when I'm walking. Okay, so the osprey is quiet. The osprey isn't making any sounds. That's a good thing. I'm going to go towards the center of the field, okay? By the way, that osprey's not going anywhere. I promise you she's not. Alright. Okay, so, so far so good. <sighs> okay, I'm making my way to you, osprey. Making my way to you. If you make one sound, I'm stopping. I'm stopping in the middle, remember. I'm stopping right in the middle of the field. Okay. So right here is the end, and here is the middle, okay? And we're almost at the middle. 
So right where that mound is, right there, okay. And about right here. Okay, right here is good. Okay, so, whew, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my tripod. All right, my tripod's right here. And there is the Osprey. Uh, this always takes a lot of skill to do because holding the camera at the same time is never an easy task. Mm. How about I pause this thing way quick? Hang on, let me pause, pause the video. Okay, my tripod is now on the camera, okay? So now it's just a matter of getting to the right spot. This is a very nice camera and I gotta make sure my focus is adjusted here. Okay, so there is the Osprey. You can see her there. Let's keep going. So I do have this other lever here that can kind of, well, that's it. That's as far as my optical zoom will go. That's pretty fair. That's a fair, that's a fair distance. Yeah, so you can really just see her back. I mean, I would like to go on to the other side. Now, I don't exactly know where the other Osprey is. I could like walk around just to see where she might be. You could, you could see the Osprey good enough right here. I like to know that she's safe and that she's okay. Because I really care about her, you know? I really like you, Osprey. I really do. By the way, um. A Facebook page is in the works. I say in the works. I just have to entice them to create a Facebook page for them. So if these Osprey can allow me to get closer to them, that can happen. Because I always love close-up footage. Close-up footage is always what makes watching Osprey worthwhile. Or any raptor, by the way. And one of my New Year's resolutions is to get closer to a raptor than ever before. I'm saying that that's gonna be pretty, that's gonna be a pretty tough New Year's resolution to accomplish because the closest I ever got to a raptor was 10 feet. And that was a red, a red shouldered hawk that was on a small tree bush on a windy day when I was in New Jersey. I guess it was so windy out that the hawk just wasn't able to fly off. It happens. So, as far as getting close to a raptor, it's going to be pretty difficult in a place like Georgia, because Georgia is way different than New Jersey. So yeah, so, so this year is going to be a good year, I know it. I'm hoping that they create a lot of nestlings. I, I hope they hatch a lot of nestlings. They're supposed to nest be anywhere between two and five. Man, if they had five nestlings, that would be so cool. So amazing. There's an ample supply of fish in that lake, even more so than there was last year. And last year wasn't so great because there weren't a lot of fish, or there weren't a lot of people fishing because of the whole coronavirus thing. But now things have started to settle down and now people are fishing in the lake. Which means people are bringing in fish into the lake too. And that's helping these osprey. And that really matters to me. They, you know, it really matters that they have, they have a convenient place to fish at. These osprey mean everything to me. They really do. Really, I really like this osprey right here.
there's no distance that's too close. There's no distance that's too close, in my opinion. I mean, if I could get five feet away from this osprey, I would. If I can get two feet away from this osprey, I would. If I can get five inches away from this osprey, I would. I know this osprey probably wouldn't like me to get anywhere near that close, but just saying. What else? What else? What else? What else? Just trying to think of other things to say. Oh yes, by the way, um, I'm not working overtime. So if you want to work for Amazon, you can. Because I'm sure there probably will be overtime at some point. And if you work overtime, you'll get time and a half of $15 an hour. $15 an hour is the minimum wage for Amazon. Now, it's not the minimum wage for other companies because some pump companies still pay $7.50 an hour. But if you work for Amazon, you're going to make double that amount just in regular pay. And you get time and a half on top of that if you work overtime. And they also have shift differential for night shifts. So since I work night shifts, I get an extra $0.60 cents an hour. And for overtime, I get time and a half to shift differential, which ends up being an extra $0.90 cents an hour. Which if you, and if you combine the overtime with the, with the um, pr shift premium, it ends up being an extra dollar and 50 cents an hour, which is a big deal. So I recommend working for Amazon. All you have to do is visit Amazon. Jot, jot, blah. It's Amazon.jobs.force. Force.amazon.com. I can't remember the name of the website, but just go to that website, search for Amazon Jobs on Google, it'll come up, and then you'll be able to apply to position at an Amazon facility nearest to you. Now, I work for Jax too. I'm on the fourth floor on the north side of the building, and my name is Jeremy. Jeremy Herzl, so you can put me as a reference if you'd like. Okay, at the bottom of the application. And that can really help me out. And I need the extra money. Um, you know, I could always use a little bit of extra money, and I do get an incentive for recommending people to Amazon. And I could use that money to purchase better camera equipment, or do something that makes things more convenient with for these Osprey. And speaking of more convenient, I am going to put a fish in the nest at some point. I mean, this Osprey doesn't know it yet, but it's going to happen. And I do have a drone that's capable of doing this challenging task. Okay, maybe it's not challenging, but I do risk this osprey for that. So what I would do is I would put the fish close to the edge of the nest, okay? I would need to put it somewhere where the osprey can see it easily. I wouldn't try to sneak behind the osprey. I would make sure I go right in front of the osprey, and I would make sure I fly the drone Preferably above the open field so that it's literally a straight line to the nest, basically a, a horizontal line towards the nest. Because you don't want to like just spook the osprey and try to fly upwards with the drone. I want to fly upwards when I'm like, I don't know, 300 feet from the nest. And then once it's like eye level with the nest, I would immediately go a horizontal direction. That's that's my idea. That's my plan, okay? I mean, the osprey is going to see a flying fish pretty much. <laughs> uh, that's kind of the, the idea behind that. I don't know where the male is. That's, that's one thing I have to wonder.
I see one Osprey, but I don't see the other one. So the question is, where is the other Osprey? Um, the other Osprey is not near the nest, but is not too far from here. Now I could go to the other park to see if the Osprey is over there, but I don't really, I don't want to waste any time because there's not really much time until it gets dark. Now there is one thing I want to show you way quick. So I'm going to zoom out so you're going to see how far away I am here. And I want to show you something. Alright, I want to show you this full moon that's over here. Take a look at this. And that's not as far as I can zoom in. Zoom in better. Right, there we go. So yeah, there's a full moon. You could really see the craters and everything on this moon. Like this camera is like a telescope. It really is. It's one thing I love about this camera. And like I said, if you want to see the whole moon, it's like that. There we go. Okay, back to the Osprey. Back to the Osprey. Okay, so. There's the nest. Okay, you can see it right there. And it's just a matter of doing this. Nope, nope, nope. Uh oh, nope, 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 not working. It's always the hardest thing about uh, filming close to nighttime because, uh, oh crap. Uh oh, nope. Mm mm. That's. Um, focus is a little jittery a little bit. Alright, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. Yeah, so there is the female. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to film for too much longer because I got to get home and these mosquitoes are biting. I mean, even, even though I, I did put sunscreen on still pretty bad and mosquitoes are bad here in Georgia. It's just too bad it's warm out. I mean it's 70 degrees which which is good but usually it's been colder around this time of year. These osprey have been deliberately waiting until it's warmer. Because <laughs> one thing's for sure they don't like the cold but they like the warmth. That they like. One thing I like about filming these Osprey is usually you know exactly where they are because they have to stay near the nest. They have to protect this nest. This nest is very important to them. Even though they're only here for like five months in a year. They completely abandon this nest the rest of the year. So yeah, uh, not really much else to say really. I mean, I'll 
Guess I'll just continue filming these os this osprey right here. And the osprey's not making calls. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Osprey likes me. Yes, you like me. <laughs> That's what that means. So I think she is standing in the middle of the nest, but I can't like be a hundred percent sure about that. Yeah. Um, so here is what I am going to do. I'm going to see if I can get almost right underneath the nest. It's alright Osprey, I'm going to get closer. So the Osprey is pretty high up. Um, usually they do like picking spots for their nests that are like taller than the tallest trees. I can't really think of a tree that's taller than these. I mean, most, most of these trees, at least 80% of these trees are smaller than the pole that the nest is standing on. So that's a good thing. So why did the osprey pick? This nest? Good question. Okay, why did the osprey pick a light pole to the nest? The reason why is because it cannot be accessed by raccoons or possums or anything like that. Any night creatures that could possibly steal the nestlings. They like to pick a nest that gonna be on a structure which is stable. Okay, they pick a stable surface and the lights, the lights are always stable. I mean, they really could have picked any one of these light poles for a nest. They just happened to pick that one. Like I said, all these, all these light poles are all the same size. Now, there could be another osprey family that could decide to create a nest on one of these light poles. There is that possibility. But, the odds are that that's not going to happen because osprey are very territorial towards other osprey. And as a rule of thumb, if you're a raptor, you most likely want to stay at least a couple miles from other raptors. Could be the same type of raptor, or could just be any raptor, maybe even a red-shouldered hawk or a red-tailed hawk, but they want to stay as far away from them as possible. Because they're quiet, you know, they, they like things quiet. You know, quiet is what they like to do. All right. Okay, so <laughs> I can see my camera kind of got messed up here. So let me fix this. Uh, I gotta fix my right pod. Okay. All right, so you can't see the osprey, but I wanna, I wanna make sure I go over to this side. And what if the osprey flies off? The osprey's not gonna fly off. No, 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 that'd be silly. And I've gone over here to film the osprey before, although back then I was filming one of the nestlings. And I don't think I can see the osprey from right here. Hmm. Can't see the osprey from there. Let's see, maybe go over here. Let's see, I think I might have to go over to this side here. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'll do. I'll go over to this side. 
to film the Osprey. Yeah, I can't get... Yeah, I can't really get too close because then you're not going to be able to see the Osprey. That's the thing. I'm not going to be filming for much longer because it is getting dark. And we don't want it to get too dark because then you're not going to be able to see a thing. And remember, I have to zoom in this camera just to be able to see the Osprey. Yeah, so, where am I going to film the Osprey? I'm just going to go where this field is. All right. So the Osprey can see I'm in a field. I'm in an open field. How close am I going to get at this point? Mm hmm. Alright, that's it. This is going to be my spot. Okay, this is my spot to see the Osprey. Okay, just have to make sure when I zoom in that uh, Let me zoom out. Hang on. Hang on, not good enough yet. Just gotta zoom out a little bit so that I can tilt this up. Mm, maybe a little bit too far up. Okay. And then tilt just a little bit further. Uh, Osprey doesn't look very clear. Um, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and the recording's about to end in 18 seconds, so. Uh, oh, that's just the thing. Now, I could actually film this Osprey from right under the nest. Let's give it a try. Focus is really bad, but there we go. It's a lot clearer when you look from afar. Um, yeah, the lighting gets really bad when, when I zoom in. Okay, so I'm gonna do one last thing and, ooh, uh-oh, did something fall? Oh yeah, my mosquito spray, I don't wanna lose that. Don't wanna lose that, don't wanna lose that. Okay. Okay, we're good. Alright, so. Here we are. And I'm going to try to get a little bit closer to the Osprey. I mean, at this point, the Osprey is ready to roost. She's not going to go anywhere. I promise. I promise she's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, I just want to be able to have a little conversation with this Osprey before I go. Don't really know what to say to her, really, except for that she had a good migration and, you know, um, hopefully she's glad to be back home. You know, I mean, I'm happy that she's home. Wonder if she missed me. Did you miss me, Osprey? Probably not. She doesn't really miss anybody except her mate because her and her mate actually go to separate places 
when they migrate, believe it or not. They don't go to the same place. You know, her mate might go to South America while she might go to Central America. It really depends. Or they might migrate to the same place, but it could be 10 miles, 20 miles apart from each other. But they don't go hunting together or nothing like that. Even when they're nesting together, they don't usually do their hunting together. But I did see one osprey fly off from tree branch to grab a fish. But they don't do that together. They One stays on the tree branch while the other one catches the fish. And then they circle around. Okay. Am I too close to comfort? Or no? There's a guy with a camera filming ya. Okay, so that's as good as I can do it. Um, hang on a second, let me try to tilt that up a little bit. Okay. Okay, the only thing is I need to, um, I need to tilt up, tilt up. Hmm. I see why this is a, why this can sometimes be a problem. Okay, now we should be good. Okay. Um. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Uh oh. What is that? Okay. Problem is once I I start adjusting the camera, I'm gonna start running out of focus. Uh oh. Mm mm. Just have to be careful about this part, cause. Can you see the osprey? Can you see the osprey? Um, I can, a little bit. You can certainly see the nest. And the osprey standing on top of the nest. Yeah, there she is, right in the very, very center right there. Right next to that second light right there. I mean, this is, this is it. I mean, this is as close as I can get. Um, and still being able to see her. Okay, so you can see this osprey from my iPhone right now. I'm also recording on my iPhone, by the way, for those of you watching this on YouTube. And, well, the only looks really dark on my camera, or my iPhone camera, too. 
Um, so let me show you a little something. So here's your nest. Let's me get close. This Osprey lets me get close. That's what I love about her. I gotta love her. I really do gotta love her. Alright, well, I'm gonna cut it right here. See ya. Okay, so for those of you still watching on my other camera, um, I'm going to be leaving because really at this point you're not going to be able to see anything. And I'm right now I'm on the second recording of this so uh, I'm at 20, 20, I have 20 minutes and 17 seconds left of the recording. Now these recordings are coming up in seven minute increments. I don't have any control over that. The, the camera just automatically switches to the next video clip after seven minutes. So at this point I probably had like five clips. Yeah. I don't know where the male osprey is, but I know he's around. He's he's here. <laughs> All right, he's he's gonna come back <laughs> with this osprey. It's just that he doesn't need to take care of the nest right now because you know there's no nestlings to take care of yet. The female isn't incubating yet. Okay, that that I can be sure of. Okay, she's just protecting the nest right now, which is great. She's doing what a mother should do and I feel that that's very important that she protects her nest all right Osprey thanks for letting me watch you I do appreciate that I always appreciate when an Osprey has no fear all right I'm very happy that you let me film you Good night, Osprey. Oh, by the way, I should create a name for these Osprey. I'm going to go ahead and name the female Mary after St. Mary's Lake. So bye, Mary. All right. Good night. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to name her Mary. And I'm going to name the male Victor. Yes, I'm actually going to name him after a, a longtime friend of mine on Facebook. Oh, and by the way, speaking of migration, did you know that sometimes Osprey even go to the Caribbean to go on vacation? Yeah, yeah, they go on vacation at the Caribbean. But I don't know if these Osprey did that. But they can. They could go south and instead of going to Central or South America, they can just go straight down. But not cross the ocean completely, but go to the Caribbean. But the odds are that they're going to go to a place that's big, bigger, that's got more lakes, more opportunities to fish. I mean, there are fish in the Caribbean too, but they like fresh, a combination of freshwater fish and seawater fish. They don't really just like one or the other. They like to have both, if possible. And if you have both, 
then you get the best of both worlds and you end up, you know, being more successful with that. And, you know, I mean, these osprey like to fish. I mean, fishing is a way of life for them. And they like to be able to catch a variety of different fish. And they can do so if they have options between fresh water and seawater. So that's always a great thing. All right, so there we go. And take care, Osprey. Good night. Sweet dreams. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Don't let the mosquitoes bite. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all the Osprey footage that I have for tonight. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Yep, and that is my car right there, and I am leaving. I don't really have to film myself doing this, do I? No. And do I have everything? I hope I, hope I do. Do I have... Yeah, I do. <laughs> I was making sure I had all three. All three of my, uh, my things with me. That's great. Perfect. All right, so here is my car, and, well, I mean, I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it right here. Good night, everybody. Good night.